Okay, are we rolling? Hey everyone, and welcome to a new podcast show we're doing called The Idle Room Podcast. I'm Mark, and I'm joined here with Yu Gyeom. Hey, how are you all doing today? With JB. Hey, hello everyone. With Conan. Hey, hi everyone. And with Troy. Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. Um, so, we're doing something completely new here, and actually it was Jin from BTS who helped set everything up. Oh, Jin! Yeah, like he approached me the other day and said he had this great idea for a new project where we all get together and host a podcast, and he set everything up himself. He rented this studio, bought all the equipment, he did the graphic art, everything, and he was going to be on here on the show with us, but it turned out he had a major pipe burst, I think it was. I don't know, but he had a major flood in his house, so he couldn't come. But he sends his love anyway. Ah, uh, that sucks. Yeah, but he said to go ahead and do the show without him, and he's going to try and be on for a later episode after he's dealt with the flood in his home or whatever's going on. Sorry, Jin. Wait, Jin's the crazy guy from BTS, right? The one who jokes all the time? Yeah, he's actually in charge of a lot of stuff down here. Like, a lot of what goes on in New Eden, like, he's seriously involved in pretty much everything down here. Oh, right. Yeah, I think he's, like, Grand Chief Ambassador now or something. Yeah, like, head of New Eden's government, I think. Yeah, basically almost everything that goes on around here, he's in charge of in some way or another. That's cool. Yeah. So basically, Jin approached me and said, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we all did a podcast series together where we just get as many idols as we can on here? and just talk about stuff. And I thought, what if we talk about movies instead? Like, make it a genuinely themed podcast, rather than just us talking about anything. Because everyone here loves movies, right? Yeah, totally. I can agree on that. Who doesn't? Yeah. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing for this show. There's going to be 15 episodes planned, where we all talk about movies, what we all like about them, our thoughts on Hollywood, the movie industry as a whole, and, you know, just talk film. It could be really interesting. Let's do it. Let's go. So anyway, our topic for today, Deadpool versus Wolverine. No, sorry. Deadpool and Wolverine. What did you think of it? And what do you guys think of the modern MCU as a whole? This is a topic I really want to cover because we just saw this recently on IMAX, didn't we? Yeah, me, you, and JB. Yeah. Conan, did you see this movie recently? No, I actually didn't get the chance. I was in California at the time, shooting for a new music video, so I haven't had the time. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, nah. Don't be. It's still, like, only been out for two weeks now, I think. So yeah, it's not been out that long. Uh, Troy, have you seen the new Deadpool movie? Yeah, I did. I saw it with a buddy of mine from South Africa. Uh, we met up just the other day, actually, and we're hanging out in L.A. and thought, hey, why don't we go see this movie? We saw it, loved every minute of it. It was so awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, this is going to be spoiler heavy for this podcast because we really want to talk about this movie and Deadpool's place in the MCU as a whole. So, Jay, I know we talked about it at the theater, but just for the audience listening, what are your thoughts on the movie as a whole? I fucking loved it, man. Dude, bringing back all the old forgotten Marvel characters after so long. Seriously, my jaw was on the floor the entire time. Yeah, fucking Blade! Oh my god! I seriously lost it when Wesley Snipes showed up! I was like, what the fuck?! <laughs> Dude, I remember your face in the cinema. You were like this. Oh! I could not stop laughing. That seriously blew me away as well, how they managed to get all those old Marvel characters in on this. Fucking Gambit, dude. Yeah, do you know the story behind that? Apparently there had been a Gambit movie in production hell for over a decade and a half now, and Channing Tatum was always supposed to play Gambit, and it never happened. It was crazy. And Elektra too. Elektra, Blade, dude, fucking Chris Evans coming back as Johnny Storm. Seriously, I completely lost it. Yeah, I was like, wait, who was that at first? Then it hit me. He used to be in the Fantastic Four. 
Dude, that was fucking incredible. And that death scene, oh my gosh, that death scene. I still can't stop thinking about it. I was like, no, that was Chris Evans. <laughs> yeah, I legit thought they were going to show Captain America teaming up with Deadpool. And I was like, wait, why is Captain America down here? Best joke in the movie, hands down. I was not expecting that. That's what makes this so awesome. If you don't know what to expect going in, it really takes you by surprise, seeing all these cameos again. Yeah, what I love about this movie, it's like a perfect send-off to the old Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because there was a time before the MCU where Marvel tried this, and it just failed miserably. Ugh, tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, Blade was good. What else? I think the first Iron Man movie was pre-MCU, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know about that, actually. I think both the Hulk movie and Iron Man franchise are both pre-MCU, but are both considered canon to MCU. Yeah, when did Disney buy Marvel anyway? I want to say like, hold on, let me look it up. Hold on real quick. 2009. On December 31st, 2009, the Walt Disney Company purchased Marvel Entertainment for $4 billion is what it says on Wikipedia. So when did Iron Man come out? Let's see. Iron Man, Iron Man. 2008. May 2008 was when Iron Man 1 released. So yeah, just pre-MCU, but still canon to it all. But when did Disney establish the MCU? That's the real question. Let's see. 2008. The first MCU film, Iron Man 2008, began Phase 1, which culminated in the 2012 crossover film, The Avengers. Phase 2 began with Iron Man 3 2013, and concluded with Ant-Man 2015 while Phase 3 began with Captain America, Civil War, 2016, and concluded with Spider-Man Far From Home, 2019. Oh shit, I guess we're wrong then. Disney had this planned all along, it seems. Wow. Seriously, No Way Home was part of Phase 3? I thought that's when Phase 4 started. Well, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about as well, actually. Because the MCU, let's face it, it's been completely downhill ever since Phase 3 ended, so... Let's talk about that, shall we? Yeah, I'm the same. I thought No Way Home was Phase 4 as well. Yeah, because they made a few duds in between, didn't they? Eternals? Eternals came out just before No Way Home did. So I'm guessing that was Phase 3 as well. Um, I'm looking at the wiki right now, but the dates are in a bit of a weird order, so bear with me a moment. Ant-Man Quantumania wasn't that long ago, right? Like, during the pandemic? Yeah, Ant-Man Quantumania was 2023, so just after the pandemic ended, give or take. Depending on your area, I'm guessing. Yeah, man, I hated that movie! We actually went to see it together, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I remember you hated the crap out of Quantumania. Well, the first two movies were so good. Like, they were basic, simple movies about a superhero most people don't know about, but they went all out with them and put so much effort in. This just felt like... Ah... Uh, it was a mess. Yeah, and Kang was a weak villain as well. Like, who the fuck is Kang anyway? If you don't watch the Loki TV series, you have no idea who this character is or why you should care about him. Yeah, they tried to build him up to be the next big Thanos as well. It just wasn't paying off in any way. Ugh, I fucking hated that movie, dude. Fucking, it was way too long as well. Yeah, I remember you totally dozed off during the third act. I had to keep shaking you. I was like, you goom. Wake up, man. Don't leave me to suffer through this alone. <laughs> oh, I hated it. Wasted Bill Murray cameo as well. The jokes were lame. Michelle Pfeiffer trying way too hard to be badass. Just, ugh, hated it. Yeah, one thing I really don't like, they keep putting important plot details in their streaming shows as well. So, like, if you haven't seen WandaVision or Loki, like you just mentioned earlier... Hawkeye. Yeah. If you don't watch all the Disney Plus shows, you have no idea what's going on in these movies. Like, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. If you haven't watched every episode of WandaVision going in, you have no idea what the hell they're talking about throughout the entire thing. Yeah, that's the thing with Marvel, isn't it? You kind of have to see everything to get who these characters are and what's going on. And you gotta see them in order as well. Yeah, that's the thing. Bro. If you don't see every Marvel movie, every TV show, every single spin-off, you have no idea what the hell's going on. No idea whatsoever. See, that's what I wanted to talk about as well, because... 
my introduction to the MCU was through Spider-Man because I love the Spider-Man movies. And if you go in just to see the Spider-Man films with no context as to anything Marvel outside of Spider-Man. There's no way. You're completely lost. Dude, I didn't have a goddamn clue what was going on. Like it takes place after Civil War. There was an alien invasion. Talks of Captain America being a war criminal. I was like, what? Just get to Spider-Man. What is all this? Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing to expect your audience to have seen at least a dozen other movies before going in. That's how they get you. Yeah, well, you know what? It did make me want to seek out all these other movies and just catch up with everything. But man, that was a head trip the first time I saw Homecoming. You're going to admit that's an interesting strategy to make money, though. Sell a movie, convince everyone to see every single film in the entire franchise that came before it. Yeah, and that's the thing now. Everyone's seeing how that works and are trying their own take on it. The Justice League. Ugh, the fucking DCU is such a goddamn mess, man. It's such a mess. Is Ezra Miller still playing The Flash, by the way? No, there's no way. I would be shocked if he still was at this point. I mean, holy shit, if he still is. Holy shit. Yeah, I think there was some legal hell with Warner Brothers where they couldn't get rid of him or something. Yeah, hold on. I'm going to look that up real quick because I was wondering about that as well, actually. Hold on. Honestly, it would be kind of fucked up if he was still getting work in Hollywood after all that stuff about him came to light. I mean... He had a 17-year-old he was grooming in his ranch. Oh my god, really? Like, I knew that guy was a train wreck, but holy shit. Yeah, I remember watching a documentary about that, actually. He had all kinds of guns and drugs in this weird hippie commune thing he had going on. Yeah, he choked that one girl as well. Just this whole creepy Charles Manson vibe he had going on. That's messed up, man. I remember him in Perks of Being a Wallflower. I thought he was so good in that movie. I was like, dude, this is a guy I could watch on TV forever, you know? Yeah, did you ever see him in We Need to Talk About Kevin? No. I know he was in the Fantastic Beast films, though. Okay, I just looked it up. According to a new report from Variety, DC Studios will part ways with all its major Justice League stars, including Ezra Miller's Flash, for the new DCU reboot set to launch next year under James Gunn and Peter Safran. And that was from October 15th, 2023. So yeah, I guess he's out. Thank God. Apparently they were really fighting to keep him on as well. Like there's so many conflicting reports about it. The DCU is trash, man. I don't know. They're really making a comeback with the new Joker movies. Yeah, Joker and Harley Quinn's coming this year, I think. I really want to see that. Lady Gaga is Harley. That's going to be so cool to see. Yeah, I saw the trailers for that, actually. I really want to see it as well. Dude, let's go together. Yeah, I'm down. Let's do it. Yeah, I wanted to save Batman for a later topic because I really want to talk about the DCU movies as well in a later episode, but I do think it's interesting that Batman is like the only DCU franchise people care about. Yeah, because the DCU is fucking trash, man. I mean, when you got the Green Lantern, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman to look forward to, is it any wonder Marvel still wins? <laughs> like, even at its worst, Marvel still barely has to try with the DCU. It's just such fucking trash, man. Well, they got James Gunn coming in to reboot it next year, so you never know. James Gunn did the Guardians movies, right? Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was his last Marvel movie. Now he's moved on to DC. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, Batman I love, but fucking DC, man. It's such a mess. That might be a good place to end it, actually, because I want to save DC for a future episode of the show. Are we wrapping up already? Yeah, man, I think we're all good, right? Yeah, I mean, we pretty much covered everything, I think. Yeah, I'm good. You, Gim? Fucking DC, man. <laughs> well, there's no time frame for these episodes, so we're pretty much just winging it, I guess. So, guys, yeah, thank you for tuning in. We're going to be doing 15 of these episodes. We're going to cover a wide range of topics from DC, modern films, old films, you name it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. God bless.
We have a lot of guests we're going to be getting in on the show as well. Members of BTS will be joining us, Jimin, Jungkook, hopefully Jin once he gets his plumbing situation fixed. Was Jin meant to be hosting this show? Uh, no. He pretty much just said, here's the keys to the kingdom, just talk about whatever I guess. So I thought it would be cool to cover like Hollywood movies and just keep it all based around one topic instead of us just talking about whatever all the time. Makes sense. Yeah. But guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. We have other guests we want to try and invite onto the show, with Exos Kai being on for episode two, so look forward to that. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you all next time. Bye. Yeah, bye. So long. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs>